Over at the left, it will say shift. So press the shift key and then press the nine button, which says reset above it. So shift, then press the nine key. Up comes three steps, step one, two, and three. What we want to reset is the setup data. So you have to press the one key on your calculator. So press one. Up comes a, a screen that says reset okay with a question mark. We want to click on yes, which is the equals button. So we come down and we press the equals button. And we want to confirm that we want to reset our calculator. So we have to press the AC button. That's the yellow button that says off above it. So press the AC button to confirm. Your calculator has now been reset. So it's back to the original settings as when you bought your calculator. So you can now work away on your calculator as normal. So very quickly, just go through those settings again. You press the on button, first of all, to turn it on. You press shift, then the nine key and follow the instructions. So press one for setup, press equals for yes, and then AC to confirm. And it will always bring you back to a blank screen on your calculator. So in our example, it wants us to draw the graph for the function f of x is equal to two x squared minus x minus three in the domain minus two is to three. In the domain is basically the values for my x, my inputs. So between minus two and three, as you can see in the table here, is minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. Now you can go up in halves or decimals if you want to be very precise, but you can make that setting on your calculator here. So what we have to do is, first of all, on our calculator, we have to type in this function, two x squared minus x minus three. So in order to do that, we press the menu key, and then we press three for table. Up comes the symbol f of x. Now it doesn't matter if your function is called f of x, f of t, g of x, whatever it may be, they're just different names for a function. And on the calculator, they're using x, but your question might have a t in it for time or n or something like that. But it doesn't matter, the process is the same. So in order to write in the function two x squared minus x minus three, I'm gonna type in two, and then I need to find the x. The x is the red x above the bracket symbol. So in order to find that x, you need to press the alpha key. Once you press alpha, press the bracket and you should see x appear. Then hit the square key. Now, again, if you're looking for a cubic, you use the button to the right of it and you input the power yourself. Then I go minus x, so minus, and I need to find that x again. So I press alpha bracket and then negative three, so minus three. I then press equals in order to save that function now on my calculator. Up comes another function, g of x. I only have one function. I don't need a second function, so I'm going to press equals. If you have a second function, input it here now. So up comes my table range. Where do I want my data to go to and from? So I want to start at negative two. So I just type in minus two here. I press my equals key and it'll bring me then to end. Where do I want to end? I want to end when x is three. I press my equals and it brings me down to step. The step is how it increases. So I want it to go up in units of one. So I'm going to keep it as one. But like I said, if you want to go up in decimals, smaller digits, say for instance, 0.1, you type in 0 0.1 as your step, but I'm happy to go up in units of one. I then press equals and up appears my table. So here you can see all of my answers. So my input of negative two corresponds to an output or a Y value as seven, minus one corresponds to zero, zero corresponds to minus three, one corresponds to minus two. You can see there, that I'm missing the final two items. So what I need to do here is just arrow down on my keypad and there's my one, my two and my three, my final input. So three is corresponding to a value of 12. So I'm just gonna write them now into my table. So there you can see the values of X are minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. And my values for Y are seven, zero, minus three, minus two, three and 12. So I'm going to put away my calculator now and from my table, I'm going to write down my coordinates, my points or my couples. So my points are minus two, seven. My second point is minus one, zero. My third point is zero minus three. My next point is one, negative two, two, three and three, 12. 
and they would be the six points that I would then sketch onto my coordinate graph in order to plot uh, that function. And that's how to use our calculator uh, using the table or the graphing function in order to find our points. Over here is the list of numbers that I'm going to find the mean and standard deviation on my calculator on. So the numbers 600, 470, 170, 430 and 300. I've listed out the step by step here uh, on what you have to do on your calculator, but let's come over and do it manually so we can follow it uh, by the video as well. So first thing I need to do on my calculator is hit the menu key. So the menu key is the little one here to the left of the on button. So I'm going to press my menu key. I'm then going to press on two for statistics. So you can see the histogram, that's kind of the giveaway um, as to know which uh, key to press there. So I'm going to come down here and press two for statistics. I then want to select one variable because I'm putting in a list of values. So I'm going to press the one key now. Up comes a table and I now need to input the data onto that table. So the list of numbers, as we said, is over here to the left these five uh, numbers. So the first number I'm going to key in is 600. So I press the 600 on my calculator. I now have to press the equals key. You have to press the equals in order for that number to appear in your table. I now key in the 470 and once again hit your equals key. I now put in 170, hit your equals. 430 equals. And finally, my fifth number is 300. Hit your equals to input that number. So I'm now coming down here to my AC. I need to click on the AC button in order to save that data on my calculator. Uh, your screen should then go blank as it appears on mine saying statistics one variable. I now want to ret retrieve my mean and standard deviation. So I need to click on the OPTN, the option button here. So I'm going to click on option and up comes three selections. I need to click on two, one variable calculation. So this is going to retrieve my information. So I'm coming down and clicking two on my calculator and your screen now will display maybe six pieces of information here. Two of them are important to us. The first one, the X bar represents the mean. So the mean for this list of numbers is 394 and the standard deviation is the sigma symbol here, sigma X and my standard deviation is 147. So the mean is the first one, and the final one is, or sorry, the second last one is your standard deviation. And that is how to find the standard deviation and the mean on the new Casio calculator. So I'm first of all going to set my calculator to allow for a frequency uh, to be set on it. So what I do is I'm carrying out these steps here now. So I'm going to press the shift key, then the setup. So I'm pressing shift, setup, and I arrow down in the little center of the keypad and I look for statistics, number one. So I press the one key and I want to turn on frequency because I have a frequency table. So I press one for on. I am brought back now to my main screen and now I want to set my calculator in statistics mode. So I'm now down on to step setup two and one. So I'm pressing my setup key and you can see here in the little histogram for number two, that's telling me statistics. So I press two for statistics and then press the one key for one variable. So I'm putting in one variable, but I also have a frequency. So up comes a table like this and just make sure that it has an X at the top and a frequency column as well. The X is going to be your variable. So I want to input the data now. So when I want to put in the zero, I just type zero on my calculator, then press the equals key. And you'll see that the zero has been input into the table. Don't worry about the frequency part just yet. It'll come up as one, as you can see in my calculator, but we'll change that in a second. All I'm doing now is putting in the variable. So I have the zero in. I then press my next variable, which is two, press my equals. I will then press the three, and equals and four and equals. So you can see my variables are now input. I have zero, two, three, and four, but my frequencies all say one, but I need to change my frequencies. So using the keypad in the center of your calculator, arrow to the right, and the little black bar will now appear in the frequency column. And I'm just gonna arrow back up here to my first variable, which was zero. 
Now the frequency that corresponds to zero is four, so I need to type in four and then hit my equals. The frequency that corresponds to the two is three, so I press three equals. And then I input the two equals, and then my final frequency is three equals. So just have a glance back at your table and you should see that the frequencies correspond to the variable. So my variable of zero corresponds to four. The two variable corresponds to the three frequency. The three variable corresponds to the two frequency and the four variable corresponds to the three frequency. So once I'm happy with my table, I need to save that data. So I press the AC button on my calculator. And your screen should go like what you see here, staying statistics, one variable. So just if you're looking down on the left hand side, we're now down to here. We've completed the AC step. I now want to retrieve my data, my mean and my standard deviation. So I'm going to press the OPTN button, the option button here on my calculator, just below the shift key. Press that key and up comes three options, one, two and three. We want to press two to retrieve our variable calculations. So I press two on my calculator and up comes this screen. Now there's a lot of information on this screen, but the only ones that we're concerned about is the X bar. The bar above it is telling me that that's the mean. So the mean for this frequency table is two. And if I go down to the symbol here for Sigma, that's our standard deviation symbol there. And it is telling me that I have a standard deviation of 1.58. So more than likely, they're the only two pieces of data that you need. The mean being the first one, X bar, and the sigma X being the standard deviation. And that's how to find mean and standard deviation of a frequency table. So this question is asking us to find the correlation coefficient from the data in this table. On the left hand side here, I've outlined the instructions, but we'll go through them here on the calculator as well. But just if you want to follow the bullet points as well. So first thing you need to do on your calculator is go to menu and press two where it shows the little histogram, which means statistics basically. So you press the two key. You then press the two key again. And you should now see a function table appearing with a column for X and a column for Y. I'm gonna put the top line of my data in as X and the bottom line in as Y. So on your calculator, just go 11 equals. And you should hit the equals because it won't go into the table otherwise. 17 equals, 15 equals, 13 equals, 12 equals, 10 equals. If a number repeats, it must go in. So 10 goes in three times. 12 equals, 14 equals. I now use the arrow key to come over to the Y column and I scroll all the way back up to my first input. So what corresponds with the 11? It's the 13 on the bottom line. So I input one three for 13, hit the equals button. 21 equals, 20 equals, 19 equals, 15 equals, 16 equals, 12 equals, 14 equals, 14 equals, 17 equals. To save the data now in your table, I have 10 pieces of information here. I hit the AC button. Your screen should go blank. I now want to retrieve the data, so I come over here to the button that says OPTN. I press the option button and I press 3 for regression calculations. That used to be REG on the old calculator. So press 3 in your calculator. You will now see three pieces of information, A, B and OR. OR stands for correlation coefficient in mathematics. So you can see on this distribution of data, my correlation coefficient is now 0 0.865. And depending on the question, it'll ask you to one decimal or two bit decimals or whatnot. Remember that your correlation coefficient goes from zero to positive one or zero to negative one. So if you're doing a question at home, you can see that your correlation coefficient might be a negative answer, but it should always range from minus one to one. And that's the correlation coefficient on the new Casio calculator. So here's a typical example. Uh, this data shows the engine sizes and the fuel economy of a range of petrol cars. So you have your engine size and fuel economy. Now you can do this by looking at a scatter graph, but I think using the calculator is a little bit easier and quicker for finding the line of best fit. On the left hand side here, I've just outlined the steps that you're carrying out in your calculator. But let's do this example out step by step. So like I said, once you've reset your calculator, we just need to set our calculator to statistics mode. 
So press the menu key and then press two, the histogram symbol, and up comes four options. So we're pressing option two, which says y equals a, B, a plus bx. Now the b in front of the x is going to stand for your gradient, the slope, and the a is the y-intercept. So this is basically the equation of the line. So we press two and we input the data then from our table. So I'm going to put the engine size in, in the x. So that's 1.6, then hit your equals. 1.4 equals 3.0 equals 1.2 equals 1.1 equals 1.0 equals 2.0 equals 1.7 equals 1.3 equals 4.0 and finally 3.5 equals. We then scroll back up and we are now going to input the y part, the fuel economy. So 12 equals 14 equals 11 equals 14 equals 15 equals 18 equals 11 equals 12 equals 15 equals 6 equals 8 equals. Now we want to save the data, so we press the AC button on our calculator. It then comes back to this blank screen saying statistics y equals a plus bx, and we now want to retrieve our data. So I'm down here now on the options section. So I press the OPTN button on my calculator, and I press 3 for regression calculation. So that's our line of regression or our line of best fit. So we press 3. Up comes uh, three digits, a, or letters, A, B, and R. R stands for the correlation coefficient, which is done on a separate video, but you can see it's there, minus 0 0.92. The A is coming up as 18.3, and my B as minus 3. So I'm just going to now write out my equation of the line based on this data. So we generally know the equation of the line to be written as Y equals MX plus C. But for our calculator, it's written as y is equal to a plus bx. So it's just a uh, phrase slightly different. And when we fill in our equation of the line, it's going to be y is equal to a, which is 18.3. That's the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis, plus my b, which is minus 3x. Now I'm just going to go to one decimal place for both there. And that's the equation of our line. y is equal to 18.3 plus minus 3x. Or if you want to write it in the form y equals mx plus c, you can go y equals minus 3x plus 18.3. And that's how to find the line of best fit from our new Casio calculator.